Gentlemen, introduce yourself, please. I'm DJ Techno Scratch. I'm Calvin Cooley C. So, um, Techno, can you uh, give us a, a little insight on how you started DJing and how you met Cooley? Oh, I started DJing um, when uh, actually one of my cousins used to DJ a lot, and and uh, I just used to watch him. And one day I don't remember what record it was, but I heard somebody scratching on a record, and for some reason I knew exactly what they were doing to produce that noise. So uh, one of my brothers was in the army. His name is Emmett Lee, and he, at, and when he came home, he uh, bought me some equipment. And from that day forth, I was just, you know, I just started DJing. I kind of just knew what to do. And uh, I was, uh, I, you know, got pretty good. And I was going around trying to battle everybody. Then me and Brain Damage became a group because we were from the same area. And we used to go record at Cooley C Studio. And uh, that was with Beware at the time, right? Yes. And um, one night I got a... a uh, me and Brain Damage were trying to get signed to Beware Records. But what happened was one night I got a phone call and Brain Damage and Cooley were on the phone and they, uh, you, Cooley asked me if I wanted to DJ for him and Brain Damage was going to go with Dynamics 2. And uh, I was like, hell yeah, you know. So that's how me and Cooley got together. And from that day forth, you know, we just... Started doing stuff. Huh? Started doing stuff. And um, of course, through Beware Records, um, you guys ended up uh, in Brazil. Right? Yes. Yeah. So how was that experience over there? That was, the whole culture and everything. Oh, the, the the that was like one of the best experiences that you know we ever encountered. Yes. You know, we had over twenty thousand people in a stadium, and we did like uh, two shows in one night. We had twenty thousand on this side of town. Then we drove another. 45 minutes away or so, 30, 45 minutes, and we had a 5,000 people at another spot. So it was like unbelievable. I don't know. Because, yeah, well, you know, bass music here, it was a whole culture. Yes. Yeah. So over there, it must have been a whole different culture and how they were using the music, or was it the same? They were vibing it the same? Well, I'll say, I'll say, I'll base it on break dancing. Okay. When, when we were, when we were like kind of, transitioning out of break dancing when we got there we saw that it was almost in the beginning phases so you know but the the fashion i'll say you know it's hard to determine what fashion uh you know to to differentiate between the two fashions because hip-hop has always been uh uh Hip hop has always been I don't want to say for the for the poor but you know it wasn't about money you know hip hop is like you just come as you are you know street life, street life you know the so it's like you know you look at if you're looking at somebody who's you may, may look like they are not too wealthy or anything like that they're still coming from the same place you are so you're not really looking at them like you're not wearing Gucci you're not wearing Louis really didn't matter you know and as far as um, the um, the dancing styles here in South Florida, what was going on with the beats and stuff for the women? Oh, the uh, uh, booty shake. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, the up tempo. Yes. Up tempo. Yes. The, uh, cabbage patch. Uh, the running man. They've been doing the running man forever in Florida. Uh, and like you said about twerking. Yeah, the you know, twerking, they call it yeah, twerking now, twerking but, now, but they, they were twerking back then. Yeah, they were shaking their ass back in the <laughs> back of the day. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. Right. And of course, the, the bass sound, now it's slower tempo. Everybody's doing the slower tempo type of stuff. Or Cooley, you're a producer, so do you, do you hear a lot of halftime in that? Yes. Is that what I, it is? I think um, most definitely the bass music, it was one, uh, 128 to 140. And now all the uh, rap records now, it's 140, but they put it halftime. So it's a 70, you know, and so it's still a bass music, but half time. And snare on the other, on, on the instead one, of every instead of, one. Yeah. Yeah. And also they're tricking out the hi-hats. They're yes. also using a lot of the snare rolls like we used to do back in the bass yes. with the, the octaves and yes. using yeah. a lot of that stuff. So basically it's still around. 
Yes, it is. It's and, still and relevant. Right? It, it's very relevant. And, you know, that's one thing I always tell people these days. It's like we're in 2013. And, you know, that's right. You know, and it's yes. like they're calling um, the music of today hip hop or rap music when it's actually bass music. So, you know, you know, to, to in today's market, most of the records these people are hearing is bass music. 